Okay, so we're now officially recording. Now, um, a test, the unit A test was due last night and most of you guys did it. Um, if there were any issues, again, that's what the text remind, the remind texting is for so that you can text me, let me know what's going on um, so that you don't miss out on your opportunity to complete your assignments and do your tests on time. Um, there is still a bit of confusion as to how the class works. Um, we're already, I guess, only a week in, but at this point, I would hope you kind of get the sense of how it works. So I'm going to share my screen just to kind of reiterate how the class works. Um, now, I'm going to go as a student because I believe I set it to where it's not going to lock me out. Okay, yay. So in unit B, this is the flow of how things work. Um, I do have to view this page in order for it to unlock the next thing. And then I have to view that page or that link in order for it to unlock the next page. And then I forgot to put a requirement on this, but you would have to view, normally you would have to view this page before you could um, click on the homework link, okay? Um, once you click on the homework link, when you finish that homework, you wanna come back and you wanna mark this as done. And then the same goes for homework five, homework six, and the review. So you click on the links, go do the assignments and web assign, come back to Canvas and just click mark done instead of open in a new window. And then of course, you've got to contribute to the discussion, either asking questions or just saying that you understand the expectations. And then of course that would eventually unlock the test. And once you submit that test, it will um, open up the last item, which is where you upload your paperwork, okay? So that's the flow of how it goes. I'm just gonna go through just maybe the first four so you can see me go through that process because I was getting a lot of text messages. And unfortunately in the future, I mean, I don't work <laughs> from 7 a.m. in the morning till 11.59 p.m. every day, right? That's just not going to happen. So I'm not going to be available every single time all Monday night. I tried to make myself available pretty much, I think, until about 10 o'clock was when I turned my phone off. Um, but I tried to stay available the whole night just because there was the first test and I wanted to make sure if anybody had any issues and that they were texting me that I was able to get back to them um, right away so that it, you know, they could get started at least by 10, 20. I tried to stay up at 20, but I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, sometimes to 30, and it's, it's hard <laughs> to stay awake that late for me, okay? Um, so this is going to be the unit B overview. So just keep that in mind, because in the next um, time we have a test, I need you guys to understand how to do everything. Um, that way I'm not getting 10,000 texts all throughout the night, right? Um, I know it's just the first week and unfortunately this class is like two classes in one. So we have like a test every single week. Um, there's a couple of times where we'll skip a week, but for the most part, it's every single week. So because of that, we had to like learn super fast, right? Which does not help as far as absorbing everything that's going on. But hopefully with this next go round, now that you've gone through one of the units, um, the second unit will be a little bit more intuitive, okay? So here are the learning outcomes. These are just the things that we're going to learn how to do, solve quadratics by extracting roots, completing the square. Um, eventually we're gonna start doing some stuff with radicals and exponents. And then eventually, probably Thursday or Monday, we'll get into the complex numbers, okay? Um, so that's kind of just the overview of what you'll be learning. And then this is the to-do list. So either attend the lectures or watch the lectures, regardless of which way you're doing it, but you definitely want to see that lecture, right? Um, you don't want to try to jump into an assignment not having gone and seen the lecture or attended the lecture. Um, there's also lots of information as to like just now, you know, an announcement where I'm kind of going through how everything works. You don't want to miss those bits of information either. Okay. So it's super important that you do attend class or you do go back and watch those um, videos. Okay. They are going to be there for reference. I'm hoping to get them up by noon. 
Um, yesterday's didn't come in until afternoon for some reason, but most of the time they come in within an hour and I can upload them as soon as class is over and it pops into my um, inbox. Then of course you have to attempt the homework assignments and the corresponding review. And then you do have to contribute to the discussion board and then complete the unit test and then the paperwork, right? That's, it's all outlined in the module itself, okay? The important thing is to pay attention to the deadlines and the deadline times because I got so many messages. This first unit, I was very, very flexible and I was unlocking things if you didn't get to them, um, pushing back the deadline. So you probably got emails saying that a deadline changed for this or that. I was just trying to do what I could to make it so that everyone could get to that um, unit test. Um, but in the future, that's not gonna be the case. I mean, these deadlines are here for a reason because I need you to have done these things in this order, okay? So like I do have all the homework and the unit review due at 11.59 a.m. That's so that when we come into class, and even if you're in an online class, and those people sometimes will come into our face-to-face -face or the remote class, um, they can get the, they can ask the questions too. And I'll know that they've done the review as well, as well as you guys, okay? So you're supposed to do all your homework in the review by Wednesday the 8th before class starts. I will not push back the deadline time or the deadline dates unless you ask for an extension. But remember, you only have three throughout the whole semester. You don't wanna burn them all the very beginning. And then if something crazy happens throughout the semester, you don't have anything to fall back on because you burned all of your extension requests, okay? So it's always best to just save those in case there is an emergency. I did have a couple of emergencies already, so I have sent out some extension requests. But again, you want to save those as much as possible. Okay, um, the next thing is, is the question discussion. Now, I have this due at 11.59 a.m., so it's before noon, just before noon. Um, and the reason why I have it due at that time is because we would have already gone through questions and answers um, in class on that day, but then that still gives you about two more hours in case you think of something else extra. Um, you can go ahead and type it in there, or just to confirm that you understand the exp expectations, you go in there and you, you state that in that discussion, okay? And then, then that gives me some time um, to go in there and make sure that I can answer all the questions if there were any questions that were asked. Um, and then I will post those questions by 6 p.m. Because again, we don't start the test until about 10, 20 or so if you wait to the last minute, okay? If you didn't have any questions in the discussion, there is nothing that prevents you from, as soon as class is over, go into the discussion, say, I understand the expectations or ask your question. And then as soon as I respond, you can go in um, and take your test. You don't have to wait until 10 29 p.m. Notice that it says start the test before 10 29 p.m. Okay. As early as you want to take that test, you can. If somebody were to go through and try to do all the homework all on their own and do that review all on their own, they could take the test right away if they wanted to. Okay. You do not have to wait until the last moment you can take a test to take it. Um, and then again, I need to change this because it should be nine. You should only have one more hour. The tests are an hour because they're real little. They're not very long and lengthy. Um, so I only put an hour for the time frame. Um, and then, of course, the test will be due at 11.29 p.m. And so then your paperwork is due at 11.59 p.m. Okay. Um, we did already finish this first unit, unit A. So we've gone through all of that. But um, today and tomorrow will be the days that I actually start grading everything, okay? So I haven't looked at anybody's stuff yet. I haven't graded anything yet, um, but that's what I intend to do today and tomorrow. So by Thursday, you should have some feedback and I will share during class um, where to go to see that feedback, okay? Dun, dun, dun. Let me log in to Cengage real quick so it can say, so it can tell me that. <laughs> Somebody was telling me they were having problems, so we definitely 
we need to fix any web assign issues still. I'm hoping now it'll let me in. Oh, it's still not doing it. Yeah, I think they deactivated it so that, oh, I know why. I'm in student view, that's why. Oh, but I have to be in student view. Okay, let me open this in a new window and then I'll come back and go back to student view. Okay, so, so far I've only looked at this and so then notice there's a green check and then now I'm gonna click on the videos Again, we don't have any videos yet, but this is where they would be posted once they start coming up. I'm just gonna turn this into a link. So it'll turn blue, you'll be able to click it and get to the video. And then next to it, I'll put the PDF file of anything that we write on paper, okay? Once I click that, then I'm able to go click into my homework assignments. So you would click this gray box down at the bottom to actually open it in a new window, kind of like it did this thing. And then you would go complete it there in that tab and do the whole, whole assignment. Once you're done with that whole assignment, you're gonna come back to this tab and you're gonna click mark as done. When you do that, that's what enables you to see the next homework, okay? So then I would click on this one, it would open a new tab over here, and then I would be able to do that assignment and then I would come back and mark this as done. Um, and like I said, the reason why I did this is just so that people can make sure that they're keeping up with everything. And then this is confirming to me that you've actually finished that um, assignment. So I kind of have an idea of who is in which boat, how many people have done it and how many people haven't and things like that, okay? Um, then once I do that, I'll finally open up this discussion and then eventually we'll open up the test. And there are still 10 questions on the unit B test and the rubric is still exactly the same. So I will be grading based on this rubric. However, I've been getting some text messages and, and messages inside the paperwork assignment. And one of, the pap one of the comments or the messages that I received was kind of alarming. Somebody said, um, I found all the answers um, by going backwards. And that set a red flag for me because if that test was about factoring. So going backwards, if all you're doing is checking the answers that were there provided to you, that is not going to give you credit, okay? It's not um, because you're not following the directions. The directions say to factor. So multiplying things out to see if they equate to what you were given is not the process of factoring, okay? So I definitely need to make you aware of that. You have to be careful with that. I would suggest when you're doing the test that you pretend that those choices are not there and you follow the directions and do whatever it's saying to do, okay? Um, so I don't remember who that was that gave me that message, but it made me worry. I haven't looked at the test yet, um, but now I'm scared because I'm thinking that that person's not going to be getting a great grade because they probably just checked all the answers instead of actually performing the directions of what the problem was asking me to do. So just keep that in mind as you go through the future. Um, the first test is always going to be pretty tough as far as grading. A lot of the low scores happen on this first test. Um, and that's just because this test is really like the learning curve test. We're figuring out how everything works. We're figuring out um, what the expectations are and all of that good stuff. So it's, it's a little, it's lots of zeros on this first test in the past, okay? So that's not abnormal. Now you can come back from those zeros and we'll talk about that once we get to that point in time, okay? I don't wanna say anything too soon because then people start um, strategizing in a way that instead of learning the material, they're like, well, I'll just sacrifice this test and get a zero here because I can make it up later. And that's not what I want you to do. I need you guys to learn this material because mathematics very much is like um, a stairs, right? 
Each thing you learn is like a stepping block to get to the next step, okay? If you're not proficient in one step, that weakness is going to carry with you into the next step. And then eventually you get so far up the steps that you're not successful at all because you didn't have that strong foundation, okay? So with that said, when it comes to factoring, um, that is going to be a huge thing that we're going to be using, you're going to be using throughout your entire rest of your math classes. Whether it be this class, pre-cal, calculus, you are always going to be factoring a lot. Um, so keep that in mind. That's not kind of a topic that you can just kind of, you know, get over it real quick and then you never have to see it again. There are some topics that are kind of like that. Factoring is not one of them. So you have to learn um, to be proficient in that factoring, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go through this workbook. And today we're gonna be doing 1.4B. And so again, here are the objectives for this particular section. And then these are the things that we're gonna be doing inside these slides, okay? So the first topic is how to solve the equations you extracting square roots. So it says, consider the quadratic in this form where you have something with variables squared. It could just be X squared all by itself. It could be, you know, a whole expression with X in it in parentheses with a square, okay? And then it has to be equal to some number where this number is actually a positive number. It's greater than zero, okay? And see, it says right there, U is an algebraic expression. It could be X or it could be something that has X in it, okay? And it says you have um, two solutions. So if you were to get, solve this equation exactly the same way that we solved it when we were factoring, you would have to get this equation equal to zero by minusing D on both sides. So then you would end up with this equation. Then you would factor this equation using the difference of squares, which is exactly what they have here, and then you would set each one of those, um, those expressions inside the parentheses, you would set each one equal to zero and then solve the resulting equations. So the, here they have both of the um, equations equal to zero and then they solve and notice that they get square root of that number and then negative square root of that number. So this is just to show you where the square root uh, rule or theorem comes from, um, it, it comes from factoring, okay? So if you took what you already know and you solve the equation by factoring, you notice that you get two solutions, positive and negative D, okay? So I could go up here and solve this equation real fast without having to go through all the factoring. What I have to do is in order for me to get rid of a square, I have to take the square root. And so you would take the square root on both sides of this equation. And when you do that, you need to know that if I had done the problem by factoring, I should end up with a positive square root of D and a negative square root of D, okay? So you should have both of these answers. So notice that there's a short way to write it. You can just write plus and minus in the front. So that's where this rule comes from. So if you have an equation that has this kind of form, you're gonna get two solutions. U equal to positive square root of whatever this number is over here, and then U equal to the negative square root of whatever that number is. But a lot of times we write it like this, okay? Um, so notice that in order for me to apply this extracting roots theorem here or property, um, notice that you have to have the expression that is being squared by itself. It has to be all alone in order for you to apply this extracting roots um, theorem. So notice on this problem for part A, they have to get the X squared piece because X is the only thing that's being squared here. And so they have to get this X squared all by itself. So the first thing they did was divide each side by four, okay? So that made the four go away on the left-hand side, and then it turned the 12 into a three. Now that you have the equation in this form, you can apply that rule that says I would get X without the square 
equal to plus or minus the square root of that number three, okay? And then you have to be careful because you should check both of your answers in the original just to be sure that they're correct. Now, remember, if you're on a test, it is great to check your answers so that you know you're selecting the right one. But as far as you showing me your work, checking the answers is not the same thing as solving, okay? And so you need to know the steps to solve, not necessarily just the steps to check. Okay, I wanted to point that out because that message I got really did scare me. Um, now, here's another one. Notice it's a little bit different. I don't have just the x squared this time. This time I have a whole expression with x in it being squared. And so as long as that whole expression with the square is by itself, I can go ahead and apply that rule. So I, I get the expression inside the square, okay, on the left-hand side of the equation. So it no longer has the square. And then I get the plus or minus the square root of the number that was on the right-hand side. And then remember, we're trying to solve for x. So you do actually have to get the x all by itself. So then the opposite of minus three is to add three. And so that's why the three is positive over here, okay? And you can check both of those answers in your solution. Um, I recommend you do on the test. Just don't think that that's all you need to do on the test. Checking is just to double, make sure that you selected the right answer. But for your work, you actually have to show the steps of solving, okay? Now it's saying that suppose this, you have this equation, the one we use from example 2b, um, and it had been given, or I think it might've been example one. Oh no, it's example two. Um, notice that if I were to square this and then minus the seven over, they're telling me that I would have gotten this solution, okay? Um, and this, the solution to this equation is the same solution as it is for this equation, because these two equations are equivalent. So that's all it's saying. So it's saying I can't factor this um, problem. So I couldn't have solved this problem by factoring. However, if I could have turned this equation into this form, then I know I could use the extracting roots theorem and solve that equation. The process of taking an, ex, uh, an equation that's in its general form and then turning it into this, which is called its standard form, that process of going from one form to the other is what we call completing the square, okay? To go from this expression on the first row to this expression on the bottom row, all I need to do is actually do x minus three times another x minus three, foil it all out, and then minus the seven over. And I will get the expression that I have there in blue. So to go from standard to general, it's pretty easy. You just multiply it out and then move the number over. But to go from general to standard with the square, um, that process is harder and it's called completing the square. So we're gonna talk about how do I do that, okay? The first thing that they're gonna explain to us is that some mathematician somewhere noticed a pattern, okay? And the pattern they noticed is that if you have x squared by itself, whatever number you have in the front, you could take half of that number and then square it. And if you did that and you added that number to the expression you started with, so this is the expression I started with and I added this weird big magic number. If you were to try to factor it, it miraculously factors into x plus b over two squared. So essentially what you had in the parentheses goes inside this parentheses down here, okay? Um, so that's the main idea as far as completing the square, okay? Is this b over two squared, you add that. Now we have to be careful though. So here's where we go. If I have it in this general form here and I'm trying to get it to that standard form with the square, the first thing you wanna do is have an expression that looks like this on one side of the equation. 
So to do that, notice that they added the six over to the right-hand side. So that now I have an expression that looks like the one in the rule. Then what we do is we take this number that's in front, which happens to be a positive two, okay? You take that positive two, you divide it in half, and then you square it. Well, two divided in half is one, and when you square one, you just get one. So notice that they're adding this one squared or the one um, on both sides of the equation so that this equation is equivalent to the one before it, okay? So you wanna make sure that the equation here with the red ones is equivalent to the line before it. If you add one to only one side to complete the square, then the equation you are writing is no longer equivalent to the original, okay? And in order for you to find the correct solutions, all of your lines need to be equivalent to the previous lines, okay? Once we do that, then we'll have x squared plus two x plus a regular one, because one squared is one. And then you would factor x squared plus two x plus one. And you'll notice that after you're done factoring, you get this expression, x plus one squared. And then if I take on the right-hand side, six plus one, that's where this seven comes from, okay? Then I can apply my square root idea. So I get whatever's in the parentheses on the left side. And then instead of seven, I get plus or minus square root of seven. Still have to solve for X. So we still have to minus the one over. And that's where this answer comes from. And as always, you can always check your answers if you want to, okay? Um, and so here's them trying to check it. They squared it. What does it mean to square? It means you actually have to take negative one plus square root of seven times itself. When you're done with that, apparently this is what they get here, these three terms. And then you have to distribute this to, or no, actually they get this. They get the first two terms after squaring the negative one plus square root of seven. Then when they distribute the two, they get these two terms over here, the negative two plus two squared is seven. Minus six still comes down. Notice that the negative two squared is seven and positive two squared is seven will cancel. So you end up with eight minus two minus six, which is actually equal to zero. Um, we will check one just so that you can see how that works. Um, and then we'll go from there, okay? So here's our first practice problem. So it says solve this equation by um, completing the square and then extracting the roots. So I'm gonna change my camera over to my paper. So I need you guys to um, make sure you pin my video. So that way it's really large and you can see it on your screen. Um, let me change, there we go. Okay, so this is the one I wanna solve. And so I need to do both processes. I need to complete the square and then I need to extract the root, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get this by itself, okay? So we're gonna add the five on both sides, which means there's no longer a five on the left-hand side and zero plus five is five. Then I wanna complete the square. But how do I do that? I need to add this number over to squared. And I need to add it to both sides of the equation. So that way um, the equation is still equivalent to the line before, okay? This equation must be equivalent to this equation. Otherwise you're not solving the equation you were given, okay? Now, question is, is what am I dividing by two and squaring? It's supposed to be whatever's in front of X. But this time they tried to trick me because remember that sign belongs to this number here. So it's actually not just a four that has to get cut in half and squared. It's actually a negative four that has to get cut in half and squared, okay? So then when I actually compute that, I get negative two squared. And then if I square that negative two, I get um, positive four. 
Okay. So then I'm left with this equation to solve. Nine. Now you can use all of your factoring uh, methods and your factoring knowledge to factor this. I can look at that and know what it's going to factor into. But there's also something else that they've shown us that will all help you to know exactly how this is going to factor. Okay. This is what it's going to look like factored. I promise you. You just have to figure out what goes here. It's either going to be plus a number or minus a number. And so we have to figure out, is it plus or minus? And what number is supposed to go in there? Okay. And they kind of told you, but I don't know if you caught it. But they said, whatever you get before you square it is exactly what goes here. So the fact that that's in minus or negative two means I'm going to be putting minus two in here. If there were a plus positive two inside this square, then I would be putting plus two, okay? So whether or not you're fantastic at just factoring right away, or you're using that rule that said this, you should be able to factor that, okay, right away. Once you've got it with the square, this is the standard form and the completing the square process is done, okay? But now in order for me to actually solve the equation, I have to, what they called extract the roots. And so now is where I'm gonna go ahead and take the square root of both sides and so on the left-hand side, the square root and the square cancel. So you only have the expression in the parentheses. And on the right-hand side, remember that rule. It says X equals plus or minus the square root of D. So that means here, I'm gonna get plus or minus the square root of nine. Now there does exist a square root of nine. It's a nice number. If you type it in a calculator, if you have to type it in a calculator, go for it. If you know what the square root of nine is, that's great too. But if I type that in a calculator, it's just three. So truly I have plus or minus three here. But I do need to solve for X. So I'm gonna add two on both sides. And when I do that, the process is to always put the plus or minus term in the back and then put this number in the front. If it were negative, I would put the negative, but because it's positive, I don't need to put anything in the front. And then um, you can separate this into two answers. So two plus three, and then two minus three. And so then I get five as one answer and negative one as the other answer. Now these are not answers with square roots like we saw in the other example. So we'll have one eventually but we definitely want to check. So let's check our answers and we have two to check. First, we're going to check X equals five and then we're going to check X equals negative one. I remember how you check. You have to go to the original equation, not here because if you've done this wrong, the answers are going to work here, but they're not going to work in the original. So let's try. 5 squared minus 4 times 5 minus 5 equal to 0. So I get 25 minus 20 minus 5 equal to 0. That does equal 0. Now I'm going to check the negative 1. So negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4 minus 5. And that actually equals 0 as well. Okay, so then what that means is it means both of these are in fact my solutions. So those would be the two answers that I type inside the computer in WebAssign. Okay. Okay, I want to see one. Hopefully, we get one right now, the next problem. Um, but I want to see one where we get an answer with the square root because I want to show you how checking something like that works. Oh, but we got unlucky. We got another problem. This one is a doozy, okay? So here's practice two.
they did not give me an example for this problem. So we're gonna have to try to do it on our own, okay? But example two wants us to do the same thing. It wants us to complete the square and then um, solve by extracting the roots, okay? We have a problem here though. The problem is, is that when I'm doing the completing the square, you cannot have a number in front, okay? So we need to be able to get rid of that nine, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna add the 15 over just like we did in the last problem so that I only have the x squared term and the six and the x term, oops, and it's now equal to 15. But I cannot have this nine here. So I'm gonna to have to factor out that nine. And this is gonna be a little bit complicated because I do need to figure out what number is gonna go here. You can use your calculator. Remember, you're taking this expression and dividing it by nine, and that's where the x squared is coming from. So now I'm gonna take this expression and divide it by nine. Now I know a negative divided by a positive will give me a negative, and I know that the variable is not going to change. But what I do want to know is what is six divided by nine? It's not a nice number. It's a decimal. So if you hit the button right above the enter key, this one's the enter key at the bottom. Right above that, you have the FB in blue. That's to go from fraction to decimal and vice versa. So I'm going to hit that and notice it converts that decimal to a fraction. So I'm going to type in that fraction here. You can't type in the decimal because in all these problems, they want the exact answer. And for this decimal specifically, I would have to cut it off at some point and round it. And doing that means that it's not the exact same as what's there on my calculator, okay? Because it is 0.6 repeating forever. But even the calculator itself had to round and chop it off at some point, okay? So make sure that if you're getting decimals that you're using the fraction versions of those decimals. You do not have a choice. You have to use the fraction version of your decimals. Now, I can't have this nine here when I'm trying to complete the square because it's only supposed to be x squared and then a number in front of x. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by nine so that this nine can cancel and now I have just the x squared and then some number times x. Over here, I don't know what that is, 15 divided by nine. It's not a nice decimal, so we're gonna hit a double arrow and it turns out that's actually five thirds. Now we're gonna complete the square. So we're gonna take this expression and we're gonna add two thirds, actually negative two thirds, right? Negative two thirds over two squared. And we have to add the same thing on the other side, negative two thirds over two squared. Always take this number, whatever's in front of the X. If it's positive, it's positive in here. If it's negative, it's negative in here. But that's the number that goes there. And since this has to be the same as that, it's the same number over there as well. Okay, now let's go figure out what that's gonna look like because it's fractions and nobody likes fractions, right? Um, so negative two over three, and I'm gonna hit divide by two. And let's see what we get inside that parentheses. So in the parentheses, we get negative one third. Then what is negative one third parentheses squared? Notice I typed it in exactly the way it looks on my paper, okay? I get x squared minus two thirds x plus one ninth. Over here, I get five thirds plus one ninth. I am not gonna sit here and try to factor that. That's fractions, right? Fractions themselves are already horrible. <laughs> factoring itself is already horrible and now we have double whammy, right? So I am going to use that shortcut that says I can use this number to figure out how to write this. So it's gonna be X, that number in green, 
and then a square on the outside. On the right hand side, I can use my calculator. Five over three plus, oops, wrong button, plus one over nine. So I'm using this button right here above the seven to type in fractions. I'm gonna hit enter and it tells me it's 16 over nine. So as ugly as this problem is, this is the process for completing the square. And you also now have an example of what happens when you have a number in front of that square. Here, I can continue now with extracting the roots. So I take the square root on both sides to get rid of the square. I get the expression inside by itself. Over here, I get plus or minus the square root of 16 over nine. What the heck is the square root of 16 over nine? So square root 16 over nine. Oh, it's nice. It's four over three. So then I have to solve for X and add the one third over. So I get X equals, remember the plus or minus um, number has to go in the back. So the positive one third will go in the front. And then you can separate it into two problems. One third plus four thirds, and then one third minus four thirds. So one third plus four thirds is five thirds. And then one third minus four thirds is negative one. And so these will be my two solutions. Now you can check them. You can plug five thirds into this and see if you get zero. And then you can plug negative one into all of this and see if you get zero. I'm gonna do it in the calculator because I don't wanna do that by hand. So nine, and then I'm gonna plug in five over three squared minus six times five over three and then minus 15. And hopefully I get zero. I do, so that one checks out. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the negative one. So negative one squared and rule of thumb, whenever you're plugging in numbers, always use parentheses. Always, notice how I put parentheses around the numbers I'm plugging in. You have to do that. Otherwise you'll get different answers sometimes, okay? So both of those do check out. So they both are actually my solutions here, okay? Now again, you don't have to worry about scribbling this down. I am gonna post it later. More so, I want you to just pay attention and absorb what I'm saying, okay? You can scribble stuff down later. Okay, let me go back and see. There's no more examples. However, I do want to see another example. So I'm gonna go pull up the homework assignment for this section. And I'm gonna find one that gives me those square root answers. So I can show you how to check the square root answers. You can actually do it in your calculator, but I also wanna cover that. So let's see. Um, okay, I think I have one. So here we go. This is the problem I'm gonna try to do. I have to saw, I have to complete the square and then I have to um, extract the roots. So it doesn't have a number in front, so I don't have that same problem as before. So I'm just gonna move the two over. So I have only the X terms, and then that's negative two. Then we're gonna complete the square. So we're gonna add that number positive four over two squared. And to keep it equivalent, we're gonna add the same thing on the other side. And then we'll go ahead and simplify that, which is just two squared. And then we get x squared plus four x plus four equal to negative two plus four. And then this we can factor using that shortcut. This is a positive two now. And since it's a positive two in here, you're gonna put plus two. 
and then negative two plus four is just two. And so now we're gonna extract the roots. So I'm gonna do square root on this side, square root on that side. But that rule said, when I do this, I have to get plus or minus the square root of two. Now the square root of two does not simplify. Notice when I type it in my calculator, it's stuck just like that, okay? So you cannot do anything with it. It has to stay like that. Then I'm gonna minus my two over to get the X all alone. So the plus or minus term has to stay in the back and then this negative two will go in the front. And those are my two answers. If the computer says separate them with commas, then you have negative two plus square root of two and negative two minus square root of two. And that's all I can do with it as far as like making it look nicer or neater or more formal. It's not gonna change any, any more from that. Those are what the answers look like. But what I wanted you guys to know is how do you check the answers when they look like that, okay? You do have to check them in the original. And so I'm gonna take the one with the double negatives and I'm gonna show you how to check it in there. You can try it with the positives. So I'm gonna plug this weird expression into the equation that I was given. So notice I have this weird expression squared plus four times that same weird expression plus two. You can type the whole thing in your calculator, the whole thing. Type this whole thing in the calculator. That is okay to do. You are okay with determining expressions in the calculator. What you're not okay to do in the calculator is factor or solve equations. And the calculator don't even do that, so you're good. <laughs> So let's see, I'm gonna type all of this. So parentheses, negative two minus square root of two. I have to hit the right arrow because when I was in there, notice, I don't know if you could, yeah, you can see it in the camera. See how it has a blinking arrow that says, click the right button, this button right here. But notice that where I'm at right now, my cursor is underneath the house. And notice over here, this parentheses is not underneath the house. So it's telling me in order for me to get out of the house, I do have to press this arrow. And so then now notice that the cursor is still blinking, but the little house is not over it anymore, okay? And so now I can hit the parentheses. If you don't click the right arrow to get out of that root, you're gonna be typing everything underneath the root and then what's in your calculator doesn't match what's on your paper, okay? And so then you can't trust that it's giving you the correct information, okay? I'm gonna hit the square button right here. Then I'm gonna hit plus four parentheses, negative two minus square root of two. Again, hit the right arrow to get out of there. And then my parentheses and then plus two. And it does in fact give me zero. Now I'm gonna show you how to check the other answer without having to redo all of that, okay? If you do have this calculator, I can hit the up arrow and notice it goes to the, the last answer. I could hit the up arrow again and it goes to my last entry. I can keep going up however many rows I need to go up, but I want this. I wanna copy this. So whatever's highlighted, if I hit enter, notice it copies it, but I'm still blinking my cursor. So I can still go in there and edit it. So all I'm gonna do is hit the right arrow all the way to the beginning. And I'm gonna change that minus in the middle to a plus in the middle. So I'm just gonna hit plus and it overrides it, okay? Then I'm gonna go over here to the other one, oops, and put a plus. And then now I don't have to retype all of that. It's already in there. So I'm just gonna hit enter and it also gives me zero. So this one also checks out. So you can check them, okay? And you don't necessarily have to do it all by hand. You can use the calculator to check them real quick. I just wanted you to be sure that you're typing in the little expressions in parentheses correctly. So make sure you hit the right arrow to get out of the little house to close this parentheses. And then remember, you can go up and copy and edit it before you hit enter, okay? So you can do that. And that is gonna come in handy a lot later on in the semester.
because at some point in the semester, when we get to the college algebra stuff, you're basically going to have to check anywhere from two to like 15 answers. And so when you get 15 of them, you definitely don't want to try to be doing those on your own. You want to learn to use your calculator so that you could just uh, plug them all in there real easy. Okay. Okay, that is the end of this section that I have. I do not want to go into the next section. I want to wait until tomorrow to do the next section and we should be able to finish everything um, by the end of the week. So let me check my calendar real quick. So, Yes, that's the way it's going to work. Let me share my screen with you just so that you can see. Let me put my regular camera back on. And then share. So just so that you can see the timeline here, I'm going to go back to the modules. Now this time, just like the last time, we're going to have that weekend to work on the homework. So I prefer that you work on the homework as we cover it, just because it's fresh and you normally perform better when the information is fresh. Um, once you like sleep on it, you may not have retained everything that we just talked about, okay? And so then you may need to go review the video if you wanted to, or you can just start trying to do the problems, okay? But I definitely don't wanna talk about it yet. So. Tomorrow, we'll actually start talking about the exponents and radicals, mostly concentrating on radicals, okay? Um, then the next day, we'll continue with the exponents and radicals, and then we're gonna concentrate on the exponents, okay? Monday is going to be a holiday, so we will not meet in class and nothing will be posted on Monday, okay? I actually am moving into a new house. And so I am definitely going to be using that day to be moving, okay? And the weekend afterward. So you can message me in the remind um, if you're trying to do the 1.4 or the P.2 homework and you get stuck on stuff, I just might not respond like right away, okay? On that day, because I will be pretty busy trying to move on that day. But when we come back on Tuesday, that's when we'll cover 1.5. And then unfortunately, you're only gonna have Tuesday, the rest of Tuesday, and that Wednesday morning before class to complete the 1.5, okay? So make sure that when we do cover 1.5 that you get in there and you get it done as soon as possible, okay? Um, Supposedly, we are supposed to come back to campus on this Wednesday. And so then it is still possible that we may not have to take the test on the computer and we may not have to turn in paperwork because you'll be taking the test in front of me and you would just hand me your paperwork, okay? Um, however, I have not heard anything yet. I'm assuming we're going to hear by the end of the week for sure. So once I hear something, I will let you know by that Tuesday um, at the latest. So as soon as I hear what's going on, I'll let you know. Um, but I'm sure they will have told us by Tuesday, considering we're supposed to come back on the 8th, OK? Um, for the online students, they would just do everything just the same way as you did the first one, where you go on the computer, you enter the discussion, you go on the computer, you do the test, and then you go on the computer and you turn in your paperwork. Okay, for the online class. For us, we're gonna have that as a default for now. Um, and then if I need to disable or delete stuff later for the face-to-face -face class, I will, okay? But right now, if you look in the modules, it is already all there. So if it turns out that we actually do a face-to-face, -face, um, like an in-class test, you're still gonna do it on the computer. All the um, desks have um, computers on them like laptops, so you can still do the um, test on the computer in the classroom, but instead of you uploading your paperwork, you'll literally just hand me the paperwork when you're done with the test, okay? So that's the only difference. So I would literally just delete this paperwork thing and everything else will be the same. And I might even delete the discussion because we'll be there in class to talk about it, okay? 
Does that make sense? Everybody kind of get that? If for some reason we don't go back, you know, in person, then we do have this as a default and then we just keep going. I am hoping that we get to go back, but I have no idea. The numbers for the city are not looking great. Um, and so I am hopeful, but at the same time, I'm trying to be realistic because I know what the numbers look like. So it's kind of scary. Um, but other than that, does anybody have any questions, whether it be on like the whole process of how the class is working, this particular section of homework, anything? Y'all are quiet. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay. Uh, I, I have yeah. a question. Sure. Um, would it be possible to go over the factoring, or not the factoring, uh, the second problem we did? Mm -hmm. You went over. You want me to do another one? Yes, because I it, it kind of just glossed over. Yeah, yeah. Completely. <laughs> That's okay. Um, let me go to my web assign so I can go open up. Actually, I think I can click this and it'll open up one. And I did see one in there, so we'll do that one. Of course, it's not going to be the same for you because it'll change the numbers, but at least I can get one to use as an example. Thank you. Mm hmm. I also want to point out, I'm going to try to find, I think there's a student in another class, in the online class, that asks a lot of questions, which is good. Um, so I'm going to kind of go, I think it's this one. And the reason why I'm showing you this is just to use it as an example, because this is what I expect you guys to do. If y'all are um, working on problems and you're getting stuck, don't get too frustrated. Just do exactly what this person did where they're taking a picture of the problem and their answer. And then they're asking me like, I don't know what I did. Sometimes I ask them to show me their work. So notice how here they scribble down their work and then I'm able to explain what's going on. Um, but you can definitely do this. Just use your camera because you're, ideally you're supposed to be using the texting on your phone, right? So you could just use your camera Take a picture of your screen or take a picture of your paper. He looks like he's printing everything and then going in and answering everything, which is fine, but I don't assume that anyone's gonna do that. So you can take a picture of your screen and then um, and then take a picture of your paper and then show me that way. So I just wanted to use them as an example because they're doing awesome and they're helping themselves by asking every single time they have um, a problem, okay? And that's what the texting is for. I want you to be able to have that communication with me, okay? Especially because we're not in class right now. Okay, so I saw one, here we go, it's this one. We're gonna try that one. So six X squared minus 15 X minus 21 equals zero. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my camera and we'll change it to the paper camera. Okay, good. So this one's got that number in front. So we're gonna have to get rid of that. Now, I like to move this over first, but you could divide everybody by six first. It doesn't matter. Um, I just usually like to move this over and out of the way but you do have to eventually do both steps. You have to move over that constant and then you have to divide everybody by six, okay? So notice I did it a little bit differently than I did it before. I did the same thing. I just wrote it down differently and writing it down this way may be more helpful for you. I don't know. But here I have X squared. There, I know that does not, that's not a nice number. So 15 divided by six, yeah, it's not, it's a decimal. So remember I said we can't use the decimals, we have to use the fractions. So I'm gonna hit the double arrow and now I get, it is negative, but it's gonna be five halves and then the X. So it just looks like they reduced by three, right? If I divide this by three, I get five. If I divide this by three, I get two. Then over here, they're going to simplify that. I'm pretty sure it's seven over two, but you can always use your calculator to double check. Now notice I'm typing in 21 divided by six. 
And then if I get a decimal, I hit the double arrow. You can also type it in exactly like that, 21 over six. And then you don't have to hit the double arrow because you typed in a fraction, it gives you the answer in fraction form. And if it changes, then you know it reduced. If it doesn't change, like for instance, that problem, notice that it doesn't change, then that means it won't reduce. That is the, the number you're going to use, okay? So now that I have gotten rid of this six and I've moved that 21 over, now it fits that form to start the completing the square. Remember the form it has to be in. It has to be, it could be a plus or minus some number equal to some other number. Um, I'm just gonna use C as another number, okay? It has to look like that in order for you to do the next step, which is to add this plus or minus B over two squared on both sides. I don't know whether that B is positive or negative. In this case, it's negative, okay? So that doesn't mean plus or minus as in both positive and negative. When I wrote it here, it meant as either or. I don't know which one it's gonna be because it depends on the problem. Okay, so I am gonna go to the next step and add that thing in there. So I'm gonna add this negative five halves over two squared and do the same thing on the other side. This number, negative five halves over two squared, okay? So whatever's in front of that X, you have to take it over two and square it. I just happen to have a fraction in front of X, so I have to put a fraction over two. Now you can do that in the calculator, I do it in pieces. I do negative five over two, and then I hit divided by two like that. But you can type it in like a giant fraction. You just have to hit the fraction button again when you're in the top. So I have to hit this button again while I'm in the top. Negative five over two, and then at the bottom, two. And I don't know if you can tell, but notice that this line is bigger than that line, which means this is the giant fraction, just like I have it here. Notice that my line here is bigger than my little division line there, okay? So it should match what you have on the paper. And it is negative five fourths. So we're just simplifying what we get in the parentheses. And it's the same thing, so I know that one's also negative five fourths. Then I have to actually square it. I don't know. See, parentheses, negative five over four. Let me get out from underneath there, close the parentheses, and square it. So it looks exactly like what it looks like on my paper. That's one of the reasons why we recommend this calculator because as long as what you're typing in the calculator looks exactly like what's on the paper, you know you're typing it in there right. Whereas some of those graphing calculators, when you type those expressions in the calculator, they look nothing like what was on your paper. So it's one of the reasons why I always recommend this kind of calculator versus the other. Some of the Casios don't simplify like this. Um, and some of them do, it just depends on what you have. I don't know Casio's a whole lot. I've always used the Texas Instruments um, kind of calculators, the TIs. So I don't know what all the Casio's do. If you ask me for help with a Casio calculator, I literally will not be able to help you. <laughs> I don't know how to use a Casio calculator. But if you're using the one that rec was recommended, then I can help you with anything in there. Okay. I have to factor this and I have to combine that. We know the trick for factoring this. All we do is write X and a square. And then what was in the parentheses is what goes here, sign and all. So if this is positive, it will be plus the number. If it's negative, then it's gonna be minus that number. Okay. Then over here, I'm too lazy to figure that out. So seven over two 
plus 25 over 16. We get 81 over 16. Now we're done with the completing the square part. We've completed the square and we have it equal to a number. Now we have to do the extracting the roots part. So I can write this without the square, but when I do, I get plus or minus the square root of this, 81 over 16. You notice in the past, I like to show you why that is, and I put a square root on both sides. So here, the square root and the square cancel, which is why I only have this. But over here, that extracting roots theorem told me I'm gonna have plus or minus, okay? Now, I do believe I can simplify that. I think the square root of 81 is nine and the square root of 16 is four. So this really is just plus or minus nine fourths. If you don't know how to do that square root, type it in your calculator. Square root fraction 81 over 16. It will simplify it for you. Then we have to get X by itself. So we're gonna add five fourths and add five fourths. So it goes away over here, leaving X alone. And over here, you have to put the plus or minus nine fourths at the back. This number can go in the front. And because it's positive, I don't need to put plus, okay? And then to get my two answers, we're gonna do five fourths plus nine fourths, and then five fourths minus nine fourths. And again, I'm lazy, so five fourths, plus nine fourths turns out to give me seven halves. Notice it reduces it and everything. It adds it and reduces it. So yay calculator. And then we get negative one. You can check them if you want to, but I'm not gonna go there. So then those are my two solutions. There are gonna be some problems where you have to check. Um, polynomial equations, uh, quadratic equations are not ones that you have to check. As long as you did all of this properly, you'll know that those are the answers. But since you guys are learning, you may make a mistake in here. And that's why I suggest that you check your answers. Okay. But in the future, we will get some kinds of equations where we could have done all of this right, but one of these might still be bad. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but I just want you to be aware that that's why I keep talking about checking answers, because at some point I'm going to have to start checking answers, just not yet. Okay. We have any other questions? I have a question. Sure. On the homework, like the first problem, mm -hmm. uh, it has like two slots for each one. What, what is like? Mm -hmm. Maybe like maybe like nine, and then it's just like smaller value or larger value. Uh huh. So if you were to solve that problem, what is do, does it have a number for you? It's x squared equal to what? Eighty one. Okay. So then, if you're solving this, I don't have to complete the square because it's already something squared, right? There's no other x in there. So you're just gonna do the property, which says you get plus or minus the square root of 81. And then the square root of 81 is actually nine. So you have two answers. You have positive nine and you have negative nine. Which one of these is the smaller one and which one of these is the larger one? The smaller one's the negative nine. Mm -hmm. So this one's the smaller and then this one's the larger. Now I do notice that they also give you, they show this. This is what they have in the computer, right? Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, I was just confused about like the boxes. Yeah. So it's kind of silly on this problem because the smaller one would be negative nine and the larger one would be nine. But because it's nine and negative nine, you really can't round that. So these boxes are gonna be the exact same thing. However, if for some reason, whatever the problem is, if I were to get an answer that looks like this, ooh, shoot, hold on. Let me not box that real quick. 
let's say I get an answer that looks like this. Okay, then in that case, I have to do some thinking about which one's the smaller one and which one's the larger one, okay? So you will have the two answers, negative one plus the square root of two, and then negative one minus the square root of two. And I'm gonna round these by using my calculator, okay? I just don't know which one's gonna go on the top and which one's gonna go on the bottom because I don't know which one's larger and which one's smaller yet, okay? So let me go over here and I'm gonna type negative one plus the square root of two. Now your calculator likes to keep things formal. So notice it didn't combine them. It just wrote it with the negative one in the back, right? Positive square root of two in the front, negative one in the back. But that's not what I want. I want the decimal. So I'm gonna hit that double arrow so it can give me the decimal. So now I know this is zero point, how many decimal places does it say to round? Two decimal places. So this would be 0 0.41 because this four is not going to change that one, okay? Now I'm gonna do negative one minus square root of two. Again, all it did was give me the formal answer. So I'm gonna hit that double arrow and I get negative 2.41. Now I can tell which one's the smaller and which one's the larger. Since this is positive and this is negative, this one's the smaller one, and then that's the larger one. So I would actually type in these two boxes on the top in WebAssign, because it wants the smaller one on top. And then I would type in these two things at the bottom where it says larger. A good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if there's no more questions, then we are finished. So this one we finished a little bit early. Sometimes that will happen, but I'd rather, I'd rather schedule it so that we might have a little bit extra time to ask questions than to try to just push everything and then get ahead of the timeline. Um, it's always better to absorb things in small increments than to try to just cram everything all in your brain. Um, it's harder to remember that way, okay? But other than that, we are done. You guys are free to go. Um, I hope you guys have a good day. Try to start on this assignment. If you can't, you will have the weekend to work on it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Have a good day. You too. You miss. Have a good day. See you miss. What was the link to the uh, to rent out a calculator? Oh yes. Actually, let me stay on record for this. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, and they are actually checking out calculators still today. So you want to get in there today because the building's going to close tomorrow and Thursday. So I would come today if you can. Okay. Um, I'm yeah, gonna I, go ahead. Oh, because uh, I, I ordered it on Amazon, but I just got a notification saying that um, it's not going to be deliverable. I don't know why. So I'd have to like order it again. Oh, uh -huh. week. okay. No problem. Um, if you go here on the homepage, it's student resources. Okay. And then, oh no, I lied. That's not where you want to go. <laughs> I thought that was my page, not their page. Okay, go to modules then. And then we're going to go down to where the, the orientation module was. And that's the student resources you want to go to. Okay. I thought it was the same, but it's not. <laughs> um, um, once you're in there, you should see calculator loan program. And the, under the little ambulance thing. And if you click on that, 
make sure you're telling them you want the 36 Pro. Um, but you'll click on this form right here. And then that's when you'll fill in all your information. Make sure you're using your ACES email and then make sure you're using um, your banner ID. So I'm gonna put my thing in here just so you can see. So make sure you put your banner ID right there. It's like that 900 or 901 number. Yes. Um, and then put your phone number. I think it's gonna make me do it. So let me just put something in there. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's six numbers, I don't know. And it wants you to put your full name. They told me to make sure y'all put y'all's full names. And then J Lopez, not that. 2104862530. And then hit next. And then you can hit your initials there. They want you to read it, so make sure you read it. <laughs> I already know what it says, so I'm just gonna type my initials. Um, it's basically saying if you don't turn it in at the end of the semester, you're going to have to pay for it, but it's like 20 bucks. So it's the same thing. Um, I have read and I agree. And then what day of the week do you want to come by? I would say Tuesday, today. And then Tuesday, time Tuesday, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just go through the whole form and then I'm going to select this. And then it should give you a confirmation eventually. Make sure you bring a printed copy of your um, schedule so that they can verify you actually have a math class. Okay. Okay. After that, I think that's it. They're going to laugh at me because they're going to get my request. <laughs> but then after that, it just sends you an email confirming everything, and then you're good to go to pick it up. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure, no problem. You have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.